So we have seen earlier uh, that as we go on uh, increasing the deformation, the cross section area decreases. Okay, and we have defined uh, what is engineering stress as S is equal to P upon A naught. Okay, so we know that as we go on increasing the deformation, delta L increases, delta A decreases. Okay, so the stress experienced by a material uh, will uh, increase okay so this uh, engineering stress doesn't give an any idea about what is the stress a material is experiencing instantaneously so we need to define an instantaneous for we need to define or measure the instantaneous stress and strain so how we do that so we define that a small change in strain uh, with respect to small change in length to its instantaneous length so i have this instantaneous length over here okay and I define true strain as uh, epsilon. I integrate from L naught to L, uh, dL upon L, and then I get this relation, which is ln of L upon L naught. I can write this L uh, in terms of its initial length uh, and change in length. So let's say I have a member like this, which has an initial length uh, L naught and uh, it increases by small increment say delta l and this is i call it as an instantaneous length so l uh, remains uh, l naught plus delta l so i can write that l upon l naught as l naught upon l naught plus delta l upon l naught equal to 1 plus now this delta l upon l naught is nothing but your engineering strain okay this is engineering strain okay so i can write this term l upon l naught in terms of engineering strain so i get a relation between uh, true strain and uh, engineering strain that true strain is equal to ln of 1 plus engineering strain now i define true stress as sigma uh, which is equal to p upon a uh, and uh, this a is nothing but an instantaneous area okay so I can uh, do some adjustment over here. I divide it by its initial cross-sectional area A0 and I multiply also with its initial cross-sectional area. I arrange, rearrange this term. Okay. I apply a constancy of volume and uh, you can say that P upon A0 is nothing but uh, engineering stress which we have defined over here and L upon L0 I can write it as have, we have proved it L upon L0 is nothing but 1 plus E. So you get uh, true stress in terms of engineering stress and engineering strain. Now let's plot this together. So you get I plot stress on y-axis and strain on x-axis. So this is a solid curve which is shows a engineering stress strain curve. Okay. So now if you look at this equation carefully, sigma is equal to s plus 1 plus e for a tensile deformation that e remains positive so obviously the true stress will always be higher than your engineering stress so you get higher values of true stress okay so true stress will always be higher for tensile deformation okay and if you consider this equation you can see that this true stress true strain curve will shift towards left okay now uh, this is se curve and this is sigma versus epsilon curve so this is also called as a flow curve okay the sigma versus epsilon curve is also called as flow curve now if you look this uh, plots carefully uh, i have drawn the sigma versus e uh, up to this point okay where uh, it is uts okay that is s is maximum okay uh, and not beyond this because your constancy of volume will not hold true or valid about UTS because of naked. Okay. Now let's look at the flow curve in terms of mathematical way. So I have a, a sigma versus epsilon plot. I have this real linear region. Okay, and I can write this uh, in mathematical form as sigma is equal to uh, e into epsilon. Okay. Now this, what about this plastic region, okay, or flow curve of this plastic region, I can write it in terms of sigma is equal to k epsilon to the power n, okay. Now uh, uh, this n is nothing but the strain hardening exponent and k is the strain coefficient. 
So these n and k are materials constant. That means it depends on which material you are deforming. Okay. Why this n is called as strain hardening uh, uh, exponent? Because we can see that as I increase my epsilon, okay, or the strain on the material, the sigma is also increasing. Okay. And this phenomena is called as strain hardening. Okay. So there is an increase in uh, stress when I increase my strain okay, on material. So this is called a strain hardening. And that is why this exponent uh, n is called as strain hardening exponent. Now let's uh, see what are the values of n and how it affects the nature of this uh, flow curve. Okay. So when n equal to 1, I can say that uh, this sigma uh, is equal to k epsilon. Okay. So this is linearly uh, the sigma or the stress, true stress is linearly proportional to true strain. This is called as elastic solid. Okay. When n equal to 0, what you get is uh, sigma is equal to k. That, re that means sigma remains constant irrespective of strain. Okay. So when n equal to 0. So this kind of material are called as perfectly plastic solid. Okay. However, the values of n for most of the metals or alloys varies from 0.1 to 0.5. The k is the true stress value at epsilon equal to 1. We'll see it shortly. Okay. So I define now one more parameter that is a rate of strain hardening or a strain hardening rate. Okay. As I mentioned you earlier, as I increase my strain, uh, the stress uh, also gets increased. So I define as a rate by which uh, when I increase my uh, strain by say d epsilon how uh, the stress is increasing. So I define it as theta is equal to d sigma upon d epsilon. Small increment in stress due to small increment in strain. Okay. So when I write this relation uh, and I put I take a log, uh, log on both sides. Now at this point uh, if I put epsilon equal to uh, 1, I can say that sigma is equal to k, okay, and uh, at epsilon equal to 1, isn't it? So, this is a value of true stress. Uh, the so k is the strength coefficient as having the value of uh, true stress at epsilon equal to 1. So, what is the unit of uh, uh, strength coefficient? It will be in MPA, okay. So when I differentiate this equation, when I differentiate, I get uh, 1 upon sigma d sigma upon d epsilon equal to 0 plus n. Okay. And when I rearrange these terms, I get d sigma upon d epsilon, that is nothing but a strain hardening rate is equal to n into uh, true stress upon true strain. Okay. This is an important relation okay, which we get. Now, let's understand what happens at naking. Okay. So, uh, so, the mathematics of naking is considered in terms of a considers criteria. Okay. So, let's read this statement of uh, considers criteria. So, naking begins when the increase in stress due to decrease in the cross-sectional area is greater than the increase in load bearing capacity of the specimen due to work hardening. Okay, so I mentioned you earlier that uh, when my epsilon is increasing, the stress is increasing. Okay, I call it as strain hardening. Okay, or sometimes it is called as work hardening also. Okay, uh, also you can see that when I increase my strain, uh, dA that is decreasing which reduces my ability ability of material ability to bear load decreases okay so this is called as geometrical softening okay geometrical softening okay so what considers criteria says is that when geometrical softening is higher than your strain hardening then naking begins okay so as i mentioned earlier also that uh, naking is an instability that we don't need any increase in load to have a further deformation or to have further strain on material so i write force as sigma into a and i do partial differentiation 
and uh, at making i put that df equal to 0 okay and i find the relation d sigma upon sigma is equal to minus da upon a now just before making begins or at the onset of making i can apply the constants you have told it okay so just before the making okay so when i can uh, i can write that minus d upon a as dl upon l which is a uh, increment in strength small increment in d epsilon okay now i plug in this uh, in this relation uh, what i get is that d sigma upon d epsilon is equal to sigma so what does this indicate is that making begins at a point where the rate of strain hardening is equal to stress or instantaneous stress so in terms of let's think in terms of engineering's values now so this making begins at d upon uh, ds upon d equal to 0 that is at maximum value of s that is uts okay now let's plot this so uh, i plot this sigma versus epsilon okay uh, and uh, i plot this sigma versus epsilon and uh, I plot this flow curve that is sigma versus epsilon here and at, on this flow curve I superimpose uh, d sigma upon d epsilon okay, uh, versus epsilon. Where these two curves intersect that point uh, at that point the naking will start okay so this is a strain okay at this strain the naking will start okay and this strain is called as uniform true strain okay. So, uh, at this value of strain, the naking starts. Okay. Or when this criteria is met, d, d sigma upon d epsilon is equal to sigma. Okay. So when d sigma upon d epsilon is equal to n sigma upon uh, epsilon u, which is uniform true strain, okay, which we I have used this from our previous slide. Okay. Now when I equate uh, this uh, at naking, okay. I write it as d sigma upon d epsilon rate of strain hardening is equal to sigma. Okay, so what I get the relation is epsilon u uh, is equal to n. Okay, that is a strain hardening exponent. So this epsilon u is a true uniform, true uniform strain. That is what I have mentioned. So this true uniform strain, when it becomes or uh, equals to strain hardening exponent, that times the naking begins. Okay, and naking will start. Okay, so with this I end here uh, or on the considers criteria about making.